Is the DC Multiverse Platinum Edition Wonder Woman worth the aftermarket prices? Stick around and find out. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. Ever since the DC Multiverse Classic Wonder Woman came out, I've been trying to find the Platinum version to review also. At some point though, I realized What's the point reviewing it? In terms of packaging, the box is exactly the same. Sculpt-wise, the Platinum version is the exact same as the regular version, which I've already gone into at great length. Only difference is this time it's been painted in Superpowers colors. What about posability? I've already shown you the posability of this figure. Not once, but twice. Really, it all comes down to two categories. Playability and price. Not the accessories, mind you. They're also the same, except that the Platinum Editions are a brighter yellow. It really all comes down to the comparisons. So, this video is going to be one big comparison section. It's the first installment of a new segment I'm starting called Oops! All Comparisons. Unfortunately, I still haven't been able to find her. So, I've decided to try and experiment and create a digital model. This way we can figure out if that Platinum Edition is worth it before forking over the aftermarket prices. First things first, we've got to bring out the original superpowers to get a baseline. Personally, I think that the new one's blue is a little bit brighter than this, but overall I think it's a great tribute. Getting into the Justice League though, and starting with Superman, and here's the DC Direct Through the Ages box set John Byrne version. He's a hair short, but we're going to be saying that a lot. Color-wise though, he's definitely a better match for the regular version. Next is Essentials, who's way too small, but between the two, the blues are a better match for superpowers. Next Next up is NECA, and both the blue and yellow are a pretty good match for superpowers. That said, the reds I think are pretty good with the regular. Moving over to McFarlane, and here we have Action Comics 1000. The metallic red of Superman Shield is a great match for the regular version's bustier. Also the reds. Same with the blues. The yellow, however, is a much better match for superpowers. Here we have Hush, who color-wise is a much better match for superpowers, but again is a bit too short for both. To compensate, and here's my kit bash. It combines the head and upper torso of the Atomic Skull repaint Superman with Hush. I've also included the hands from Shazam! Fury of the Gods. At this point, this is my ideal Superman, and I think a pretty good color match for superpowers. As for what might just be the best superpowers match, and here we have the Return of Superman. This uses the Dark Knight Returns body, and I'm not gonna lie, it does look kinda silly, but again, we're talking mainly about colors. Lastly, for the Man of Steel, and here we have the new DC Classic Superman. I've swapped out the trunks from the Doomsday 2 pack. The reds and yellows are fine, but that blue is dead definitely a bit too bright. From the Man of Steel to the Caped Crusader, and here we have Nightfall Batman from DC Essentials. Not only is he too small, but he's chipped his ear and is missing a hand. Next up is Naka, who's also a bit on the small side. Color-wise, he doesn't really match either of them, but I think a stronger case could be made for the regular edition. That said, in the DC Multiverse Detective Comics 1000 repaints a pretty good match for superpowers, as is Year 2 Batman, which is the first one who's tall enough for either one of these Wonder Women. From blue and gray to black and gray, and here we have three jokes. This one's definitely a much better match for the regular version. And then here we have the blue and gray version of Hush. The colors don't match on any of these, but I think that aesthetically the vibe with this one is a lot closer to the regular. Same thing with black and gray, which I think matches up just a bit better. For our final Dark Knight, and here we have Nightfall. The bright yellow and gray is a much better match for superpowers, but that darker blue feels more appropriate with the regular release. For some Green Lanterns, and here we have the DC Essentials Hal Jordan. Clearly too small, but the colors are a pretty nice match for the superpowers. Here we have a Hal Jordan by NECA. Until that new digital version arrives, this is my go-to. But for a DC Multiverse option, and here's the overly detailed one from the Dawnbreaker 2-pack. It uses the same body as this Jon Stewart. Zipping over to the Flash, and here we have Essentials, which once again is a bit on the small side, but with the Flash I'll allow it. Most importantly, those nice bright colors are great for superpowers. Even so, I think that the Flashpoint version from McFarlane is superior and can work with either. For those who haven't been able to nab the Flashpoint one though, and here we have the Rebirth version. For one final flash though, and just because the colors are so bright, here we have Jay Garrick. As for Aquaman, and here we have Endless Winter with the alternate Flashpoint Barry head, McFarlane just solicited a reissue of this figure with short hair, but I gotta say I don't really feel that head sculpt. And just because the height's better, here they are with Aquaman from the Lost Kingdom. A little customizing, and this could be a very fun comic style version. For a few leaguers who 
also appeared in the original Superpowers collection, and here we have Martian Manhunter, who is way too short. Here's Red Tornado, whose gold makes him a much better match with the regular version, but I wouldn't mind seeing a more Superpowers colored edition. And here we have Firestorm, whose red is great for the Superpowers, but whose yellow isn't really great for anything. Like I said in my top 10 video, if the red was darker to go with the yellow, where the yellow was brighter to go with the red, it would have been fine, but as is, is kind of visually frustrating. Still, great sculpt though. Showing some love to the 2006 run of Justice League of America, and here we have Black Lightning. That light blue is a really nice match for superpowers, though he didn't appear in the original line. And then here we have Jaime Reyes as the Blue Beetle. This might be the movie figure, but it really does a great job of recreating the comic look, so I'm including it here. And since this version of the character was introduced pre-New 52, it's an appropriate matchup with Wonder Woman. The metallics, of course, make him a much better match for the regular version. Going back to the Ted Kord Blue Beetle, however, and here we have this one from the two-pack. We're actually getting a Superpowers one in the new McFarlane line, which is pretty cool. And then here's Booster Gold from the same two-pack, which was the first victim of painting over Blue Beetle's bootstraps. Here we have Shazam, whose bright red is a great match for Superpowers, but whose gold is a great match for the regular version. Honestly, we really could use an updated version of him. And then rounding out our Justice League is the Zero Hour version of Hawkman, who looks great with the regular Wonder Woman, and then fellow Platinum Edition. This one is a very sloppy repaint, but the colors are a much better match for Superpowers. For a sidekick comparison, and here's a DC Multiverse Titans Wave version of Donna Troy, and the Mattel version of Cassie, which might be a bit on the small side, but is still my favorite version of Wonder Girl. For a relative scale comparison, here are both of our Wonder Women with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. Can't help but notice his blue's nice and bright. And as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. Superpowers, huh? So, you want to show me your action feature? In my experience, it is better just to ignore him. I don't want to brag, but I'm twice the man Steve Trevor is. All right, you know what? I may have taken that one too far. Having looked at all the comparisons, I think that the regular edition is the most versatile and the one that's going to go on my shelf. That said, if you have your heart set on a more superpower style retro themed collection, well, I do think you could make this work. If this video was a regular versus for playability, this round would go to the regular version. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price, which is the other big factor. Because the Platinum Edition is a chase variant, you could not not order it specially on its own. The only ways to get this figure was either by accident through one of your pre-orders, buying an entire case of six figures from McFarlane Toys directly, or being lucky enough to find one in stores. Otherwise, your only recourse is the aftermarket. For the regular version, that figure can go anywhere from $60 to $80, and the Platinum is going for $90 to well over $100. Hopefully, with all these different comparisons, you now know if this figure is going to be worth it to you. As for me, I do hope that someday I can find one for an affordable price. Or failing that, McFarlane finds a way of getting it back out there for those of us who missed out. But until then, I'm happy to pretend. And really, what are toys for if not for playing pretend? If you have the Platinum Edition, let me know in the comments how you display her. Do you have both? Which one do you like better? While you're down there, let me know what you thought of this little digital experiment. And most importantly, if you want to see more all comparison videos. I've got a lot of ideas that I think are going to be fun, and well, I hope you think so too. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.